again, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition and uh, quite possibly the final pigskin preview of this 2013 high school football season. Danny Daniels along with David Johnson. And in the final regular season uh, week, David, still some uh, a couple of pretty good ball games. There are a couple of games that, that have some meaning. Monroe's already clinched the region championship, but East Side has a lot to play for. So uh, we're going to be at home this week uh, with Monroe area. And hopefully that's going to be a good ball game and not like it was last year when Monroe went to Covington and got beat 35 nothing after clinching. Yeah, and that was a shocker, and I still tell Coach Flick, I don't care what he says, they, they just didn't try in that game. I just yeah. can't believe that team last year could get beaten 35 to nothing after mm -hmm. what they had done the previous nine games. But he says they were really not in, into the game. They had had you know, a lot of interviews the week before, a lot made of the fact that they were the first region champ in 40, 50 some years. And that, that was they were just really distracted. Um, so this year he promises they're going to come in and be completely focused, uh, become the first uh, unbeaten team in school history. That would be quite an accomplishment. And again, just to head into the playoffs with on you know with a win rather than coming in you know having lost. And, and so they're I think they'll be ready for this. It'll be at home. It'll be senior night. Um, you know, East Side, yeah, they have a lot to play for. They're trying. They're still trying to salvage their season and possibly sneak into the playoffs. Um, but I just can't see this Monroe team laying down again like they did last year and, and falling and, and not getting that, uh, that unbeaten season. Well, they had some players that were out last week, and you would think they'd be chomping at the bit to get back in there. So that may be an advantage, having not played last week. Yeah, well, they'll be rested, no doubt yeah. about it. Uh, we saw that with... Uh, with Gurley this past week at the Georgia-Florida game, he mm -hmm. missed you know three or four weeks, and he comes in, and you saw what he did early. That could be the same thing, you know. Of course, the Monroe players, frankly, they've not been really tested, and, and they've most of them only played half a game or three quarters anyway for mm -hmm. most of the season. But yeah, you think uh, I just think they're going to want to come in and, and see that 10 and 0 sitting out there in front of them. This is their senior year for a lot of them, and I just think that's going to be a real motivating factor for them. And not to mention. They're, a, they're just a heck of a lot better than each side to start with. So. Yeah. Speaking of motivation, George Walton Academy is going to go right down uh, Highway 78 and take on Prince Avenue. Prince Avenue's already clinched the region championship. GWA trying to get into the playoffs. And uh, if they don't win this ball game, they're not going to get in. No, that right now um, they are sitting at 16 in the power rankings, the top 16 teams, of course, in Class A. They separate public and private. The top 16 publics get into the playoffs in their own, own playoff thing, and then the uh, privates have their own separate tournament. And so right now, yeah, George Walton's sitting at 16. Um, if they lose this, chances are very good. I, I mean, there could be some numbers that hadn't been turned yeah. in. There's, there's always that at the end of the year. The numbers change. And, and But right now, it would be my guess, they lose this. This is going to be the first time since 97. Uh, that George Walton hasn't played an 11th game. Uh, first time since they joined GHSA in 2010, they haven't made the playoffs. And so, and, and this would be the first time, I think, since 2007, they haven't had a winning season. They finished the year five and five. So, um, yeah, this is a big one for them. And you didn't want it, if you're, if you're a Bulldog fan, you didn't want it to come down to this, <laughs> having to play one of the top teams in the state um, in your final game and having to win and having to win at their place. That's a tall order for the Bulldogs. You know, point spread, not usually a big deal, but it could be in this ball game. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, you know, George Walton just, for whatever reason, they just, their defense has not done it this year. They have just, they can't stop anybody, it seems. And, and strangely enough, it's not just speed that's killing them, it's power. It's right up the gut that the teams have been able to find, you know, they've been able to move on them. Uh, last week, you know, they score with 39 seconds to go. They go ahead of, of um, Athens Christian. You think the game's over. Here comes Athens Christian, drives right down the field and scores on the last play of the game to beat them. Um, you know, this, I don't know what they can do. Prince is going to be even tougher, you know, to try to stop. So, um, it's, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Hopefully they can pull it out and, and give us another playoff representative, and, but, uh, but we'll see. Well, what I was talking about with point spread, if they can stay close enough in those power ratings uh, to Prince Avenue and look competitive, maybe that gets them in. I, I don't think that factors in. I think it's just strictly wins and losses. I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty complicated process yeah. to go through. But, um, but no, I, I think it comes down to wins or losses. Uh, the fact that, that um, Prince has a, a good record, um, they're a stronger team, that certainly helps them. I don't think the points are really going to help them at all. 
Uh, and Loganville is going to be over in uh, Rockdale County, take on Salem. Red Devils uh, not going to be in the playoffs. Uh, you talk about playing for pride, that's what's going to be going on Friday night. Yeah, and, and Coach Godfrey said you know, after the Heritage game when it became clear they weren't going to be in the playoffs that he felt like these guys would really step up and, and finish out the season strong, kind of like they did last year. You know, they came on the last few games. Um, you know, last week on national TV, getting pummeled by by uh, Gainesville, that was that was tough. Um, pretty much what they have to play for now is is big, you know, being able to tab themselves as the best of the rest in, in their region. Um, they're they're just one step behind the top four teams. If they can win this one, uh, they would stay ahead of their other four teams in the region, and so they'd be they'd finish squarely right in the middle. Not that that uh, makes anybody feel really good. I mean, what you're shooting for is to, is to get in the playoffs and have a chance to advance and and play you know that 11th game. And, and unfortunately for the Red Devils, they couldn't come through and beat. All they needed was one win against mm-hmm. one of those top four teams, and they just couldn't they couldn't pull it off. And so now for the third straight year, we're going to see them sitting at home after 10 games. Walnut Grove is going to wrap it up up in Hall County against a playoff team, Lanier, and we saw Lanier against Monroe area. It's going to be a tough Friday night for Walnut Grove. Hopefully they can go out on a positive note. Yeah, and, and that would be a, be a huge upset and a nice way, give them a little momentum going into next year. But, uh, yeah, this is, as we saw when, when these guys played Monroe earlier in the year, this is a tough team. Um, you know, they played Monroe probably tougher than anybody outside of Chesity. Um And so they're a solid team. Uh, they don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves. They're big and strong. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it, what a way for Walnut Grove to try to end the year and, and try to uh, finish with more than one win for the second straight year. All right, and uh, Social Circle wraps it up, and they get to take on Washington Wilkes after a season that's been one to forget if you're a Rex Sin fan, and, and Washington Wilkes the best team in that region. Yeah, and one of the best teams in the state. I think they're ranked fourth, third or fourth right now. Uh, they knocked off Jefferson, defending state champs earlier in the year, to win the region. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just it's just sad. It just doesn't get it easier for the Redskins having to come in and, and finish out the year um, against Washington Wilkes. I, I don't see really any hope in this one. I mean, I guess if they can score, that would be a victory against these guys. Um, just hopefully they can get this uh, get this past them and move on and, and look ahead to next year. Hope somebody moves in, some super stud five-star guy come moves in and, and just helps this program turn it around because they certainly need it. All right, Loganville Christian Academy in the playoffs and trying to go for their second straight state championship. They'll be at home on Friday night against Calvary Christian and uh, two in a row back-to-back would be great for Andre King's team. So uh, if you're a Lion fan, I know they'd love to see you on Friday night. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, Again, we don't know for sure what we're going to do starting next week, but uh, we'll let you know in the Walton Tribune and uh, keep watching us online whether we have a show next week or not, uh, sort of up in the air, but uh, we'll keep you advised. For David Johnson, Danny Daniels, have a good Friday night.